Hello everyone and welcome to the channel, I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus pilot and in this video I want to give a quick tip and trick to my American friends out there flying the Phoenix A320. When you have a look at the analog standby instruments, which a lot of US airlines still have since many are still flying older versions of the A320, like for example this American aircraft over here, then you will notice that you only have a standby altimeter available with a scale in hectopascals. And this is actually not a limitation of the Phoenix that they did not model any options or something. No, this is actually completely realistic. There is no standby altimeter available in inches. And therefore, we got to help ourselves a little bit. Now, obviously, many of you will say like, well, so I just dial it in up here, switch it over to hectopascals, and then I know the number in hectopascals to dial it in down here. And while that is true, there is a certain limitation attached to that, which I'm going to come back to towards the end of the video. But first, let's have a look at a little bit more elegant version of how you can do this. And that is by looking at the METAR itself. If you look at the METAR, then you will see we've got winds, visibility, clouds, temperature, and then our Q&H. And over here, since we're in the US, it's given in inches. But then we've got the remark AO2, and SLP226, and this is the important thing over here. So the remark itself, AO2, means that it's an automatically created weather report, and then we've got SLP226, and this basically is our Q&H in hectopascal. So when it says 226, that actually means 1022.6. So our q and in hectopascal is 1022, and that one we can dial in on our primary altimeter. So let's give that a try now. We're going to dial in 1022 and now in here we're going to dial in 3020 as was reported in our meta. And now let's see what we are going to get in terms of the altimeter readout. As you can see both altimeters basically give 10 feet altitude so that's it. Now I said earlier on that you should be really careful when you want to use the Q&H selector on the EFIS control panel in order to determine the QNH in hectopascals. While that is definitely a way how you can do things, you got to be a little bit careful because when you switch this over from inches towards hectopascals, then you can see already that you might get slightly incorrect numbers over here. Now there is a little limitation in the Phoenix actually, and that limitation means that it's actually better than the real unit. Better in so far as that there is a whole range of um, QNHs that is adjusted to one another. So in the real world, when you switch it between inches and hectopascals, then the inch value might change. What does that mean? Well, quite simple. If we Switch it now from uh, 3020 over to 1023. By the way, note that the Phoenix has actually rounded it up. So you will remember from down here that it should be 1022.6 and it looks like the Phoenix is rounding it up over here. The real one doesn't do that. The real one would have correctly attached it to the actual inch number. But the big problem that you may, might face over here is that in the real unit, every hectopascal value is assigned to only one single inch number and if you have a look at the units and how they're made up you will basically notice that one hectopascal equals approximately 0 0.3 or three times 0 0.3 inches so about a third of an inch now what does that mean well let's say 1020 1019 and 1018 might all correlate to the same number in the hectopascals. But when you make a setting on the real Airbus and you've got, let's say, for example, 3020, then you change it over to hectopascal and now it shows 1023. But the number in inches that might be correlated to 1023 hectopascals might, for example, be 3021 because that is like the medium number in the middle. Therefore, if you change from inches to hectopascals and then back to inches, it might change the inch number that you have dialed in over there. 
Therefore, be rather careful when you do this. Now, the Phoenix currently doesn't simulate this um, behavior of the real one, so in the Phoenix you are rather safe of doing this, but in case you're flying any other add-on, or in case Phoenix ever decides to add it with a future version, that is really something you should be aware of. Alright, I hope you liked this little video. If it did, be sure to let me know in the comments below. I'm looking forward to your feedback, and as always, stay tuned for more. Finally, if you really like the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and if you really love what I'm doing here, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thanks for watching, and see you all again on the next one.